Hey there, random internet strangers. It's Random Crypto Guy with the worst crypto channel on YouTube. Bow wow. Hooray! Or however order that goes. Uh, Bitcoin is clearing to strike. Ethereum has already struck. What drives price and Asian scalping session? We've got four things to go over today, so we got to get through this really quick. We only got 15 minutes, so let's get clear that off here. We're going to start with Bitcoin. Here's my big, big messy chart. Uh, as you can see, well, I don't know if you can see because my chart is kind of messy. I, I'll show you some cleaned up versions in a minute. But uh, the uh, SSL channel, that's this green squiggly line and the red squiggly line. I talked about that being the uh, moving averages of the highs and the lows. It flipped down here and I was getting a little worried, uh, but we were in this uh, uh, demand zone here, so I wasn't too worried yet. Um, because it was a holiday weekend on these two candles, I decided to hold through this, this flip. And sure enough, we got a flip back uh, as of uh, today on this chart. Uh, my other chart on my phone already showed the flip back, but uh, this one didn't flip. Has it's flipped back as of today, but uh, today isn't over yet, so it still has a possibility of uh, this being uh, continued to be uh, on the uh, bearish side. Uh, but it we are in the neutral zone here uh, between these two lines. Uh, I call that the neutral zone, and then we have been bouncing between uh, this demand zone here or this supply up here you can see where all the wicks are dipping into the supply here so it's going to start getting exhausted as we come climb up into it again uh, and I'll get into that in a minute and what drives price and then we have the demand here which was barely being dipped into it was formed here and then it was just barely dipped in here uh, you can see the hummingbirds dipping their beaks in here so uh, overall this this looks pretty positive. We got a nice little bitty bull trend for ants right here uh, happening here. So we just need to watch out and see what happens. But uh, as I've said, your uh, the uh, this this uh, supply zone up here has uh, been tested multiple times. So it's a good chance that we might break through this and hit up into this next supply up here. Uh, so that's looking good. Let's go look at Ethereum real quick. Uh, chart's a little bit cleaner. I've pulled off a few things to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, you can see that uh, this was a turn. This became turncoat. It just barely got tapped here, and then we had some uh, resistance here. Now resistance has become support as we busted through this turncoat, where. Uh, uh, resistance now should become support in the short term. Uh, the longer this uh, we stay away from this zone, the less significant it becomes. Uh, this is a typical rally base rally as well. So uh, they aren't usually as strong as turning points as uh, you know rejection zones like this zone down here. Uh, particularly this zone here where we have a four hour and a daily plus a daily uh, support all coinciding together here. So this is going to be a particularly strong uh, demand area at 183. Uh, but uh, we don't we can't discount this yet in the short term. So uh, I'm looking to buy probably right around here at 224. I had set some at 199. Uh, but uh, this is the four hour chart, by the way. So, but since we busted through this, I'm gonna have to raise up my limit order and I'll probably go around 225 somewhere where I buy my next, uh, my next batch of Ethereum. Uh, so I want to buy at the, I don't want, I want to, don't want to chase price, but I don't want it to get away from me either. We got a pretty strong supply area up here that it's got to bust through because it's, it's uh, overlapping uh, four hour a large four hour a smaller four hour just forming up now and a daily all and then plus of course the trend we have uh, one two trend lines so uh, that's a pretty strong area of rejection right there so let's uh, so I'm gonna look at uh, 
maybe buying in here at 225. Uh, moving on, what drives price? Um, there's a couple of things, you know. We of course we know all about the whales, but uh, how much do you really know about whales? And what I do is I follow along on the uh, Twitter. I just had this out. What happened to it? There it is. I follow this. These guys, whale alerts. What they do is they when they see movements in Bitcoin or Ethereum or Tezos or like this one right here. Uh, 15, 1575 Bitcoin transferred from OKX to Binance. Uh, what I've noticed is that particularly uh, OKX uh, is known for uh, kind of maybe laundering maybe a little bit. And Binance, of course, is the biggest. Uh, when I start seeing a lot of these Bitcoin people uh, transferring particularly from wallets to uh, different exchanges like OKX and Binance and, and BitMEX and the like. Uh, when I see Bitcoins being transferred, like this one here, 2000, transferred from that, you know, that's in, from one exchange to another. Uh, I guess they might be looking for liquidity to uh, set up uh, a... Uh, to, ch you, to change out their uh, Bitcoin into uh, USD coin or US dollars or fiat or whatever they, it is that they do. Uh, I'm, I notice a lot of these. When I start seeing a lot of these Bitcoins, see this one's the opposite. This has gone from Binance to an unknown wallet. That means that they're storing Bitcoin. So that's, that's, a, that's a bull sign. A bear sign is when you see... Uh, when you see like uh, 3,000 Bitcoin transferred from unknown wallet to Bitfinex, that means that they're putting it onto an exchange, and that means that they're you know looking at uh, selling their Bitcoin and exchanging it for something else, and they'll usually do that with limit orders. Uh, and then the opposite here, here's a good one here, uh, 10 million transferred from Bitfinex to unknown wallet, so somebody cashed out just now. So that's that's a positive. Uh, that's a that's a bull sign. So it's just you know, kind of guessing and uh, figuring out what the whales are doing. Uh, here's twelve thousand Bitcoin. Yeah, here's another one. They're transferring uh, eleven million dollars of Bitcoin to Bitstamp. Here's one from ETH to an unknown wallet to somebody who's pocketing their ETH. So. Just kind of going through that, kind of get an idea of what the whales are doing. I found that to be helpful. And uh, if you've watched some of my other videos in the past, you know that uh, uh, I've talked about market cap. And I uh, don't really have a slide for that or anything. But uh, what if there's no money flowing into the market, then there's no reason for price to rise. And right now, uh, what happened with uh, this particular rally right, here. right let's go back to Bitcoin um, this particular rally right here this one from here to here this started in April and into May and this is when people started getting their uh, stimulus money and uh, at the end of April and I know that's when I got mine and I put mine into well I put it into ethereum but uh, Another round of that's coming in two weeks, supposedly, in June. And that's when I expect to see another bump in price and possibly being able to bust through the uh, these uh, supply zones up here, up into well, when we you know hit 10,000 and then breach the, finally breach this one here at 10, 10, 5, 10, 7, and up into 11,000 here. And then once we bust through 11, then it's uh, we're off to the races because we, we do have some uh, bumps here at 12, 2, and 13,000, but uh, not nearly as strong as what's here at the 10,000 level. So we still got to bust through that. And as you can see, we just kind of been bouncing around through here. And this is the daily chart, so each candle represents one day. And we just kind of been bouncing back and forth between uh, 
this demand zone and this supply zone up here. So what I think is going to drive the price is uh, retail traders, you know, getting pretty scared about what's happening with the markets. And as they become more educated, more worried, uh, and they're going to be looking for new uh, avenues to invest. And when the government uh, puts out those uh, uh, stipends or uh, uh, stimulus checks or whatever, or UBI or whatever the hell you want to call it. I call it getting my taxes back, but uh, I don't want to go there. Uh, that's not what these videos are about. Um, then I, I suspect a, an increase in demand, and that is what's going to drive the market again. Because uh, this, this drive right here was all what they said was very organic, and uh, raw and real as uh, retail traders uh, got into the market. And they, you know, particularly, you know, people that are, you know, fortunate enough to be uh, essential workers, or I've been working my tail off. That's why my uh, uh, my uh, Twitter account has been kind of uh, sporadic in my uh, analysis because I've been working 12, 14, 15. I worked 15 hours yesterday. And so I just, I finally woke up. And uh, got got did a uh, some uh, analysis of that, and because you know we've just been kind of bouncing around this range, so nothing's been nothing's really changed all that much uh, the past couple of weeks, past almost three weeks, I guess. There's probably close to 20 candles here at this point. Uh, we, we've set up between this candle and this candle. How many candles is that? Yeah, we're at uh, 23, 23 candles, so that's uh, you know, a little over three weeks. We've just been bouncing back and forth. So uh, will it continue? Uh, you know, it depends on how much money people are going to put into the market. Uh, I can I can tell you that this when they choked up on the bat here, where uh, the whales and everybody institutions have been choking up on the bat, keeping the price suppressed below 10000 uh this is getting exhausted so we could possibly break up into this territory right here and i would just keep a eye on the whales uh, you know some of those whales might be just uh you know rich people some might be early early adopters you know back when i should have got in in 2012 uh don't know if my cousin's out there listening hopefully he didn't get caught up in that mount docks i haven't really talked to him yet uh to find out what's going on with him uh, I got some connections. I might be able to get in contact with him and find out how he's doing. Uh, so, uh, that yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's about it. Oh, oh no crap! I'm talking too much. I didn't get to my. Uh, I put a link in the last video. I talked about uh, the about the uh, uh, salmon scalping, and uh, we had another good session where we at right here uh you can see that the the salmon scalping would have worked really well right here we could have could have uh had the color change here and then bang there was a nice nice little there's 14 15 pips right there that would have been an easy easy seven nine within a half an hour and uh you know high leverage and you know small small amounts small amount of risk five pips to make seven ten pips uh you can you can boost your account up pretty quick and what you do is you look for price once we get to london close you look for price you look for rejection somewhere off of the uh, lows of that day in this particular instance you look for the lows sometimes it's you got to look at the highs and it'll bounce downward uh but you know lately it's been this 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 particular pattern this upward pattern uh, uh jumping up here and so we look for uh either a strong wick like candle right here this would have been a good one uh you know this i would have waited here maybe entered here and then i probably that would have been close to a stop out, not quite. I think I would have been able to hold on and get into the seven if I waited a little bit more and got in on this candle. This definitely would have been a nice, nice, uh, nice profit here. So that's what I do for that. Now, the next session, uh, oh crap, 
Ran out of time. Sorry. Hit click like and subscribe.